Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about the bridge amplifier. I have done a previous video on the bridge, right? And it's a pretty effective build while still being very cheap. And this build is going to also be a very cheap build, right? And I'm going to try to aim for a very cheap build so that we can save those structure for something more expensive like the pit amplifier. My pit is an extremely expensive build that we'll get to uh, in the future, right? Uh, but for now, I'm going to talk about the uh, very cheap bridge build that will be very effective, right? Um, okay, so let's get right into it. So first thing I'm going to mention is where they spawn. Right? So they spawn over here. Right? So they spawn mostly in this area. There is some spawn in the target over here. And there's an extremely rare spawn over here on the corner. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. So in either one of these cases, right, um, what's going to end up happening is that you're going to have the husk path either in the middle or towards the cell side over here. Right? Um, and you might think to yourself, all right, so if they're going to path either in the middle or the south, and how much how much of the husks are going to path, right? So are most of the husks are going to path in the middle or most of the husks are going to path in the south side, right? And most people would think, hey, because this is a shorter distance towards the middle, they're going to path towards the middle. There's no way they're going to walk all the way around over here to the south. But you'd be wrong. Actually, most of the husks always path towards the south so over here some path towards the middle but majority of them path towards the south so that's why i have the south side trapped up quite a bit right is to factor in that and the reason why most of the husks path towards the south is first off that this hill over here is actually connecting to the slant right so this natural slant is actually connected but most of the husks don't path over here right they can't path over here but in their ai they do connect right so what's going to end up happening is that the only husks that are going to be able to connect to this hill are going to be the hustlings right so the hustlings the little midgets they can actually just somehow step up from here right it is really crazy how they just clip through and step up here but the rest of the husks are going to end up dropping down and they're going to walk all the way up here right and while this well the very few husks that come through the middle right they're going to be met by these wall launchers right and then connecting through the longer pathway over here okay so uh let's talk about the tunneling system right so the tunneling system, um, I'm using higher durability traps. You don't have to use higher durability traps, right? But keep in mind that my build is meant to last so that I don't have to replace traps, right? I do not like to replace traps in the middle of runs, right? Um, so over here, this is two times impact, one reload, two times impact, one reload. This is four times impact, one reload. Over here would be four times impact, one reload, right? Um, and the reason why these are a higher impact is so that I'm guaranteed for this to be launched into the lava while this also can launch the uh, husky husk into the lava as well after a chain launch, right? So this would chain launch them into here and then this would launch them all the way up back there, right? Um, for, I actually might change this to a, um, you know what? I'm going to change that one. I'm going to change that one to, let me get that out. I'm going to change this to zero impact double reload. This is zero impact double reload, right? For just for higher durability reasons, right? So it's going to be zero impact double reload, launch them into here, four times impact one reload, which will launch them all the way back into here, into the lava, okay? You don't have to use extremely high impact wall launchers because most of the husks are going to be launched anyway from zero impact right just from being power level 130 however there's going to be some husky husks i won't be able to be launched from there and of course the smashers as well right but the smashers are not important in this area right so i'm not emphasizing on the high impact for the smashers i'm emphasizing on recycling the smaller enemies so that once it gets when it gets it's time to launch the smashers i don't have to worry about much husk okay and that is the philosophy for this right and once you launch them here, they get launched in lava. This over here is four times impact single reload to launch them all the way back over here. This is three times impact double reload to launch them up here, up here into the lava. And all these wall launchers, actually no, this wall launcher two times impact single reload, du uh, double reload, zero impact, double reload, zero impact. 
double reload zero impact and double reload zero impact. So it might be confusing with the various launchers and floor launchers I'm using, right? But they do have a reason for it and it's optimizing for the durability and to offset the wall launcher and floor launchers so they have different reloads, right? This floor launcher is gonna have single reload, double impact, launch it back here, either one or two tiles, right? And this would have double reload, zero impact. So the single, the single and the double reloads uh, offset each other. This is gonna have double reload, zero impact, right in here. This will launch them right into the lava. So it's a chain launch in a sense over here, right? Now this is double, uh, double reload, zero impact. And this is gonna be three times impact double reloads over here in the end. So these are like kind of like the smasher killers, you can say, right? Where these are meant to really for the smashers and you don't really want uh, regular husk in here. If you have regular husk in this area, that means your recycling system over here is not effective enough. You need a better one, right? Or they, their durability on them ran out, right? So this is why I really emphasize on the uh, on having a really good recycling system over here first, or a system that can launch the husk into lava more effectively. Okay. Now, so that is the tunneling over here, right? And then we're going to use a little stair over here, right? To so that so when they're on edge over here from the half of the walls, right? And then they're going to go a diagonal path over here, and then from here, this wall light is actually going to stagger the smasher down here into the lava, right? And this does work, which is really nice. And over here, once you're met with the uh, tar pit, get wall launch, three times impact, and double reload into this corner over here. Three times impact, double reload. I did not meant to do that. Um, into the lava. And from my understanding, the husks actually don't make it all the way over here. So you don't need this wall, right? Um, I'm going to have to upgrade that. <clears throat> I did not mean to break this wall. Now, for the actual amp design, right? So the amp design over here is a fairly simple design. There's walls all around with a couple slants here and there. The slants may be optional. I don't think they're necessary, right? Uh, but don't quote me on that. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna remove it and I'm pretty sure it should still work, okay? Uh, and what I mean by pretty sure it still work, it means the smasher should not be charging through your, <laughs> should not be charging through your tunnels, right? Um. Okay, so that is that. And then for the block off, right? So there's gonna be a significant amount of block off. So this is one layer over here. You could add this over here, right? If you want to. For the meteors, what ends up happening is that more often than not, every single meteor wave gets this tile destroyed. So I might as well just destroy it because every time it's gonna get destroyed because it really concentrates in that one stop, in that one spot, right? So two layers over here, three layers over here, four layers, five layers. Six layers floors, seven layer walls, eight layer slants, nine layer walls over here. So this is a total of nine additional layers, right? But if you remember from my previous video, right, I did mention that um, you need 10 layers to pack them three tiles away, right? And it is still true, and this is only nine layers, but I'm able to get away with it, right? Because I'm packing them on the edge of the tile and I'm giving them uh, distance from the amp itself, right? So this half floor is giving them distance, right? So that they don't have to, uh, they don't have to uh, break the wall at all. The only way that they're going to is if they're right up to the, against the wall, right in the corner over here, right? And then you're going to need those ten layers in total, right? But because, <coughs> excuse me, because we're over here, we actually don't need those ten layers. In fact, we can probably just get away with just eight. You can probably get away with just eight. So it depends on the position of where the smasher is on the wall, right? So if they're on the corner over here, you're gonna need 10 layers. But if they're around the corner over here, then you can get away with eight layers, perhaps even seven. I'd say I'd say eight just as a as a safety net, but then I have nine because meteors can break a layer, right? They, they can break a layer, right? Um, okay. So once we have that done over there, we can also notice that there is a little box in here, right, with the broadside. This is simply just to uh, for when the husk phase, right? So these poles do help with the husk phasing, but I do want to utilize this wall launcher over here, right, with the recycling system. So because of that, I use this, right, and I don't have these things over here, these poles, which prevents the, prevents the um, phasing. 
I'm gonna use a broadside inside over here. So when a phasing does happen, right, and then they'll just get instantly wrecked, right? And it's always gonna be a weak husk that phases. If you get tanky husk that phases, like smashers, laser boys, flingers, then those husks, right, that means there's something fundamentally wrong with either your amp design, with your, with your layering, or with your pathing, right? There's something fundamentally wrong in there, right? It's not an error, well, it is an error of the game because they, they, uh, you're not supposed to have those, but it is not an error that you can't fix, right? There's definitely something that you can fix, okay? So, with that in mind, I am going to talk about the layering over here, right? So, I do have a wall over here to prevent them from wanting to break in here. And there is a uh, another wall over here, right? So there's a full set of walls over here, and there is wall launchers over here. So all these wall launchers, <coughs> excuse me, the four launchers you see over here, three times impact, double reload, right? Just the regular ones, and box out all around here with the slants in here, and then there is slant in there, slant in there, walls around there, right? So you can have that kind of design. This should be enough layers to prevent them from the choke points, right? So the choke points that you have to be wary about is this over here, danger, this one over here, this spot over here, right? And potentially this spot over here, right? So a husk may want to instead, if it's too long of a pathway, they may want to take a shortcut into these danger spots over here, right? And you just need sufficient layers to prevent them from taking that shortcut. And there is a danger spot over here because maybe they want to break through, right, to get to the amplifier in here directly. Or this is a danger spot here, which would end up the husk would want to pick a pathway all the way around to behind the amplifier, right? So in order to prevent that, you just have two additional layers over here, and that is more than sufficient to prevent that from happening. But I'm not sure if you need one layer or two layers, but you do need layers down here regardless. If you have this empty, they will break through and go all the way behind the amplifier. Okay, so with that in mind, to talk about the uh, lobber shield, right? So the lobber shield is not only uh, a lobber shield, but it is assisting with the floor launchers, right? So the floor launchers are going to be using this uh, slant as well, right? So how it's going to end up uh, building it, right? So as you can see from here, if you just if I do that, just it, a flat wall down there, or a flat wall down there, and then go three up from there, right? So in the three by three in here, and then next to that is a three by two, and next to that is a three by two, right? So it's a fairly simple design uh, from that end, right? And starting with the flat wall from here, okay? If going down there, you would have you would then do the slant zone here, and then you would slant it, just curve it up like this, right? And the reason why, and the reason why we curve it up, right, is because if a husk is in this corner right here right you don't want them to have a collision with like a wall in here for example you don't want to have a collision with the flat wall or the flat uh, floor here for example right so to prevent those kind of collisions from happening have a slant connecting to that and now prevent all those collisions and they will still get launched the same way okay if they're on that little corner over here and they're ending up here then they get launched a little bit oh here right but because this floor launcher is not a strong floor launcher i don't have to worry about them getting flinged like across somewhere really really far okay um f so from that and then we have this little uh up down slant right which is to for this floor launcher to launch them up and then into the lot right and the reason why i want to curve it down right is because not only it'll curve it down guaranteed into lava, but it acts as a lobber shield too, right? So if you see the amp from here, it acts as a lobber shield, so they can't lob from here or fling from there, okay? And this is also to have a lobber shield as well, right? So those triangle pieces. And these slants over here also act as a lobber shield, right? And this lobber shield is not only for the tiles in here, but it's also for the flingers in here. If the flingers are too close to the flat floors over here, they have a risk of breaking those, the pathway here, right? And that is really bad to break this bridge. So to prevent that from happening, have a lobber shield for those spots, right? And they will move away into one of these spots over here. So they'll move away into one of these spots and then they'll start flinging from there, which is a safer place to fling, right? And the, when they do fling, they're not gonna fling any husks. It's usually one of the lobber balls, right? And the lobber balls, right? They It's not very often that they throw it, right? And, they, and then if they damage the amp here and 
if they damage things here and there, it's not too much of a big deal. It's not going to make you lose, right? So the flingers in the lava are generally not going to make you lose, but they do do some damage right here and there, right? So if you're looking for like a super duper perfect run, this kind of strategy may be a little bit risky, right? Because you do have lob, uh, flingers here, which do shoot out a lot of shots, right? But it, usually lava shots are not really that, uh, not really that big of a deal to worry about in my opinion. Okay. And there is one more thing to talk about, which is this over here. You need to have this. So this wall would prevent the flingers from pathing all the way to the hillside, right? So it would path them all the way up there, all the way up there, all the way there, all the way up here, all the way up here, and then they start flinging from here. It's a really long pathway, but they do take it unless you, uh, unless you block it. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that is everything for this amplifier. It's not too complicated. Right? I think it's still maintaining a relatively simple build overall, right? Um, just keep in mind though that you do need some recycling uh, in this area before you get into the lava, right? You, before you get into the lava, right? And this is mainly for stability reasons, right? Because you do want, want smashers up here charging your amp, right? And trying to, and because if you have a naked amp and actually it screws up the aggro and they do some really weird things and start hitting your walls, right? So you just prevent that from happening. Just make sure you have a decent recycling system at the start here and then launch them to lava towards there. Okay. And you should be good to go. So guys, thank you for watching and I hope you learned something from this amplifier. And so it's not too bad to build. What's going to be pretty bad to build is the pit, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, I think I want to do pit as my next video or the hill, right? Hill is also another one that should be fairly simple to build, uh, fairly simple, but the hill is a little bit tricky, right? And, but I do, I do know a lot of friends and clanmates. They have been having uh, some issues with the hill. I right, sorry, with the, uh, with the pit, not only with the lava bomb shift over here, but there's also friggin the amount of layers that you're going to re be required to do to path them correctly to over there, right? It's a, a very, very, uh, very nasty uh, build to do. But anyway, uh, I'll see you in the next video and have fun building, guys.